and uh, we can save this and hopefully show you. Great. <laughs> OK, all right. So um, Savannah Holmes. Hi. Uh, hello. Tell me, so you did your undergraduate and your master's at York. Um, just, yes. when, did you, when did you do your master's? So I started my master's in 2016 um, and until 2017 and then graduated the January of the following year. Yeah. And so, what, did you, what, did your, what did your dissertation end up being on? So my dissertation was on the French uh, romantic artist Theodore Jericho and his use of the horse in, in art. So it ended up spanning quite a few years and cross channel links as well. So yeah, that feels quite long ago now. <laughs> right, so what, what are you doing now then? So I am currently working at Christie's, the art auction house in London, and I'm working in the estates appraisals and valuations department. So that works very well for me. It's very wide ranging. So I get to see lots of different art, which uh, works very well considering what I did my degree on. Mm -hmm. So are you based in London? I am, yes. So I work in the um, King Street office, uh, just in Mayfair. Yeah, so it's the, the main Europe hub of Christie's. Fantastic. Um, so what's your typical day like then? You say you're, you're looking at lots of different types of art. Can you tell us about your day? Yeah, so it's a normal nine to five job, which uh, is very different to university. And I work um, predominantly um, on the computer, making, um, working directly with different specialists and clients and compiling different valuations for the clients. Um, so that's anything for insurance, for tax, anything for upcoming sales. And we really put those together and um, it just means that I get to work with a variety of departments which is really interesting um, and then my current role I'm a project assistant so that means that I'm working for a specific client and their specific collection which um, means that I'm actually working a lot more with the sales departments and uh, and really helping bring these items from their inception when they come in to post sale so it's quite business oriented but I'm also more involved with the items and the the cycle that goes through Christie's. So what, what led you into that role? Had you Did you know you wanted to do that when you were doing your MA or did it arrive afterwards? So I started consider seriously considering auction houses in my third year of my undergraduate degree. I started my master's, a master's degree straight after. So it, um, it didn't take long. Um, I was looking at all sorts of uh, different types of art careers and I thought, I liked the sound of auction houses. I thought it were uh, they were really dynamic places. They had a nice business oriented role as well. And I would get to look at all sorts of different art and interact with it directly. And at that point I thought I did not feel like going into a PhD and I thought that an uh, auction house would be the best fit um, in that respect. So I ended up speaking to one of the lovely professors and I think it may have been Michael White. And uh, he then led me to Tenants Auction Houses, uh, um, which is in Yorkshire. And that's sort of where I started really seriously getting into auction houses and working from there. So you, did you do any work experience there or did you go straight into a paid role? Uh, I thought that would be lovely. No, I I started off uh, uh, unpaid. I did a summer internship at Tenants Auctioneers, um, and that's uh, so I was there for a month. And then I was also doing other uh, work experience internships, uh, a couple paid roles in the art world. And then I think it was September two thousand and eighteen. That's when I started my internship at Christie's in the same department as I am in now. That was paid, which really helps, especially if you don't live in London, which I didn't, um, so I could actually afford to live here uh, on a meagre budget. But you still get to live in London and, and really become involved in the art world, which is great. So how important was um, the stuff that you did when you were doing your undergraduate and then your master's particularly to what you're doing now? Did, did you carry over any of your knowledge or your skills? I mean, I, th I think it is a vital skill and a lot of people that are going into auction houses do have an art history background. I think it's very important. Um, since my degree wasn't specified, so I didn't specify in um, post-war contemporary art, I didn't specify medieval art, I did a, a wide spanning degree and that actually meant that I could really apply that to the department I'm in now and I understand quite a few different pieces that come in and, and sort of understand maybe the best uh, person to talk to about it, what might be an interesting piece to, to examine. But um, I think you 
also considering it's a business, um, I have learned a lot more and there are also skills that you don't necessarily need from art history, but they are a very good basis. And then you start to understand all the different paperwork and, and everything going into running a business, which um, I didn't do a lot of at university. So you've had to be an agile learner then and, and pick new things up quickly. I have, I have, but it's nice to have had the foundation of, of art and understanding art and what's on the walls and being able to be excited about it. I think that's what they love in, in Christie's and a lot of these companies. They love you to be enthusiastic and excited about what you're working with. Mm-hmm. And did any of the, the sort of the research skills that you did, the, the approach to your, your masters, for instance, project planning, that kind of thing, did any of that contribute to what you're doing now? Oh, I mean, multitasking, that's always very good. You definitely need that at your master's. Um, and yeah, research. I, there are more roles in the specialist departments, I think, which deal more with research than what I've started out doing. Um, because that involves going to different libraries and going into their archives. I mean, I do a lot of work going to archives now, which is still really useful. Um, and also just being able to be diligent and figure out where something is when it's not on the correct shelf has been, has been important as well. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and tell us a little bit about the application process when you were applying for roles after your MA. Um, what, what was that like? Um, and how did you sell yourself having done an MA in art history? Yeah, I mean, it's always a hard thing, I think, when you finish a degree and suddenly you're out in the real world and you think, oh, I should have started applying for things months ago when I was busy in the depths of my dissertation. But um, I think it was persistence and perseverance because I I think it's extremely competitive and it's really hard to find your right role in the right position because there might be another um, hundred people that are applying for the same job. So um, personally, um, it took me a long time to get uh, into internship at Christie's. I started applying about September um, September 2017. I didn't get anything for about a year. I was uh, also doing more internships and work experience and working on language skills and everything like that during that period. Um, But to sell yourself, I think it's just being confident in what you have because you can be very English in some ways saying, oh, I I could be better at this. I need to improve on this. But also just know that we um, understand what you have to um, to offer the company because you do have something um, because you've studied for three, four years, five years onwards towards um, an art history degree. Um, I think also um, really sell any language skills. I think they really value those in these type of companies um, and any other if you're in any other interests, any different uh, points in the art history world because you can work in museums, archives, and that's all relevant and interesting and makes you slightly different from everyone else that's working, um, working for the same roles as well. Mm-hmm. That's brilliant, thank you. And so for you in the future, what do you what do you see yourself doing, uh, say five years time that? Five years time, well I hope I still have a job in the art world, that would be lovely. I'm. I, it would be nice to have a real permanent role at, at Christie's or a large auction house um, and continuing um, to sort of build up what I have, work more directly with maybe the artwork um, because that's something that I haven't been able to do recently and also with clients as well because that's really the um, the two points that Christie's is, is known for, it's working with the artwork and the clients so it's always building up that but that comes with experience I think so ideally yes <laughs> in, in, in Christie's and the art world like that. Well mm-hmm. fingers crossed for that, sounds like you're doing all the things to get yourself there. Oh, um, what, what if you could talk to yourself at this stage in your MA, Christmas uh, coming up to the Christmas break, you know, the, the, the winter break, mm-hmm. what one key piece of advice would you give yourself regarding the future career for you or for, for anybody at that stage? Um, I, I think I would tell myself to not worry as much. I think in MA you feel like everything, time is racing by so quickly that you don't have the time to really enjoy the research because you don't always end up doing research after your MA, so enjoy at that time. Um, and also really do what you're interested in because it's there are so many opportunities outside of university that if you, as long as you really focus what, and what you're interested in, there should be something that comes out, out of it. Um, so don't try and play and figure out what might be the best option for a job. Just yeah, do what you're passionate about and enjoy it while, while, 
while it lasts. And if you do have time, apply for stuff, do stuff in all your free time, because I know MA students have loads of free time. They're not studying at all. Um, no, just, yeah, take, take advantage of, of every moment and enjoy the MA while you have it. That's fantastic, Samala. Thank you so much for giving up your time this busy day in, in London. And, uh, and I hope you'll stay in touch with us and let us know what, what happens in the next five years. Yes, yeah, definitely. No, it's it, York was such a huge part of my uh, education and it's really gotten me to where I am now. So it's it's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. We'll go and have a lovely lunch and uh, hopefully <laughs> I'll stop recording now. Thank you.